Pixar films, you kind of tend to spend very long working on the story to get it right. I wondered kind of how long it took you to kind of figure out this story, basically, for Toy Story. Uh, you know, we, we, um, we went away for an off-site, me and John Lasseter and Andrew Stanton and a bunch of other folks, for uh, two days at the very beginning of this film to come up with an idea for Toy Story 3. And by the end of those two days, we had a lot of the building blocks of the film. We knew that Andy was going to be grown up. We knew mm -hmm. they were going to... Uh, head off to a daycare center that was going to turn out to be not so nice, and we knew how we wanted to end the film. So that, we figured that was a lot of good stuff to have come up with uh, in the two days, but it then took two and a half years to mm -hmm. write the screenplay and do all the storyboarding and really flesh out the story. So we worked on it a really long time, but that's kind of the amount of time that we spend on all of our films working out the stories. Mm. Do you feel kind of a bit of extra pressure as well, considering how much people love Toy Story? Huge. <laughs> I mean, it was hard for me to get up in the morning at times early on because... Uh, you know, I was just, I was living in fear of being, uh, of going down in history as the director who made the, the cruddy third Toy Story movie. Um, so, yeah, I mean, any, any director stepping into the, the directing seat uh, of, a new, of a new Pixar film is under a huge amount of pressure. And then I had the added pressure of making a new Toy Story film. Um, but ultimately, I had to put all that aside and just get down to the work of uh, trying to make a good movie. Mm. There's uh, quite a bit of elements of like action adventure with the start, and then Big Baby has kind of he's a bit like a horror villain in a way. So I wonder if you kind of had specific films you looked at to kind of take influence on for that. The only films we referenced really were prison movies. We spent yeah. a lot of time watching Prison Break movies because we knew that a big part of the film was going to be uh, a prison break. Um, so, you know, I watched The Shawshank Redemption and The Great mm. Escape and uh, Cool Hand Luke. And Cool Hand Luke actually ended up being a, a big influence on the film. There's some very overt references to that movie in Toy Story 3. Mm. Uh, how important was it to get uh, John Morris back as well to, to voice Andy? Well, I thought it was really important. Once we decided to have Andy grown up, mm. uh, I had to figure out who was going to play him. And I really, frankly, could have hired anybody uh, to do the voice. But it was important to me to maintain a continuity. But we didn't know where John was. We hadn't spoken to him since he was 14 years old. Uh, but we did some research and we tracked him down. And uh, luckily, he still sounded really young. Because he could have very easily have sounded like a 50-year-old man. And that would have been a disaster. But he, he, uh, he sounded really young and he was perfect. And uh, he was very honored uh, that we asked him to come back and kind of keep that continuity. Mm. Everyone has kind of a favorite character as well, so I wondered what was your favorite um, Toy Story character overall and then from the new ones in this film as well. Um, I, to be honest, I don't have a, a favorite because um, they're, I feel like they're all kind of extensions of myself and, and all of us who make these films. Um, but uh, I guess I'm the most like Woody. Uh, Woody's kind of this reluctant leader in mm -hmm. the room, and I, as the director of this film, I often felt like this reluctant leader. Um, of the new characters, I like Ken quite a bit. I think he's very funny. I like Lotso, um, and, I, and I like Big Baby quite a bit. Mm. Uh, Timothy Dalton as well seems like the perfect choice for Mr. Pricklepants. I wondered, if, was it that the case? Did you kind of think of him straight away and go, yeah, he's, he's the right actor to this kind of lovey hedgehog? Well, we, we came up with the idea of Mr. Pricklepants uh, first before we had any idea who was going to play him, this kind of fussy British thespian uh, later hosen wearing hedgehog, which is just this absurd idea. <laughs> Um, so I thought about a lot of different actors, but I, I ultimately settled on Timothy Dalton because I had seen him in Hot Fuzz, in Edgar Wright's mm -hmm. film, and I, I thought he was just brilliant. And uh, so he was on a short list of people I really wanted to work with, and uh, so we approached him, and, and he was really into it. He had to kind of dig into his past to his Shakespearean training and bring that all to bear, mm -hmm. in creating Mr. Pricklepants. He loved playing him.